Today we're going to cover a quick PowerPoint on the first people of the far north. <clears throat> the northern people of Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. These will be the Tunuits, the Inuits, and the Vikings. So the very first people, as we read in the textbook, came by a land bridge. These are people who walked out of Asia and walked into North America. Some of them stayed in Alaska and Canada area. Others moved farther south into what's now the U.S., Mexico, all the way down to Panama, and even in South America. The people who would settle in the cold areas of the north would come after the land bridge was gone. And these people are going to come by boats. Down in the bottom, you're going to see two pictures. The one on your left is a picture of people walking in a park. I put this up here to try and give you an idea of what the land bridge might have looked like. This isn't some narrow, thin, little bridge. This thing was maybe a thousand miles wide, possibly wider, full of plants, animals, maybe rivers, <clears throat> all of that. So it might have looked a lot like that, minus the road these people are walking on. And then some big boats, similar to the ones that might have been used. So these first people, There are actually a few really early groups, but we don't really know anything about them. We have very little archaeological evidence. They had no rec written records, so we don't know much. So we'll start with the Tunits. Around 500 BCE, They may have just uh, started or, or evolved or come about from one of those earlier groups, but they did lack some of the tools and weapons that the earlier groups had. So this makes some archaeologists, some historians believe they're a different group entirely, that these people might have come from someplace else. Because you go from using a bow and arrow, for example, to just using a club, a stick. I mean, no one's going to give up a level of technology and sophistication that benefits them. <clears throat> yeah. Now, most of the Tunuits are going to die out because they can't really adapt. In fact, the very last of these people is going to die in 1902. So they were around for quite a while. So let's talk about them. So, no bows and arrows. They did not hunt land animals. Everything they ate came from the ocean. They did have harpoons, lamps, which they used for heating and for light, thick clothing. If you look at the picture in the lower right-hand side, you'll see a bone carving of a polar bear. But their main hunting tool was a club. The Tunuits would find a hole in the ice or make a hole, stand over it with their club, and wait for something to stick its head out. If something looked through the hole, they'd bonk it. That's their way of hunting. Not nearly as sophisticated as a bow and arrow. <clears throat> and this is going to be a problem. I said they couldn't adapt. When things start to get warmer and the ice starts to melt, they can't hunt as much. And so they're going to have to move and constantly move and move and move anytime it gets warmer. Eventually, they're going to move to Greenland. Part of it is it's getting warmer, and they have to find new cold places to go. 
And at first, Greenland is great because it's really cold. But there's another reason they have to leave, and that's the Inuits. The Inuits are going to come in with their better technology, bows and arrows, dog sleds, things like that. And they're going to take the land. Or at the very least, they're going to be competing for the same food, and the Inuits are going to get most of the food. So, the two nights are in Greenland. At first, it's great. There's lots of ice, lots of hunting. Everything's cool. And then, Greenland starts to get warm. There's, the Ice Age is kind of over. Everything's getting all really, really, really warm. And so, they're going to go even farther north and northwest. And that's going to leave Greenland empty, mostly until around the 900s when the Vikings come. Not these Vikings. The very first Viking to get there is going to be a guy called Eric the Red. In fact, the whole reason he actually finds it is because he's kicked off of Iceland. He's living on Iceland. He committed some kind of crime and was banished. Told he had to leave the island for a certain number of years. And he started sailing west. He finds Greenland. And he calls it Greenland for two reasons. One, it did have some trees on it at the time. But... A bigger reason is he wanted people to move from Iceland to Greenland. So he came up with a name. Greenland. This place that had a lot of trees and grass and things like that makes it sound nicer. So 25 ships full of people are going to go with him from Iceland to this new land, this new land called Greenland. But from day one, it's going to be nothing but problems. Of the 25 ships, only 14 of them actually make it to Greenland. Some of the 11 others will turn back. Some of them will just disappear. We have no idea what happened to them. They sank in all likelihood, but we don't know where. So it was not a good trip. But once they colonize... They start setting up just huge farms a lot of times. Lots of livestock. I think one of the world's biggest dairy farms at the time was in Greenland. And at first it's really, really profitable. The Vikings in Greenland are making tons of money. And that money is coming from the ratio of imports to exports. Imports are when you're bringing in supplies. So you have to pay and you're buying stuff. Exports, that's when you're selling stuff. And it's being shipped out away. And at first, Greenland has lots of trees. They got the fish. They've got birds, whatever. Lots of stuff. All the farm animals are giving them the meat and the dairy and everything. So they're cutting down trees and they're selling them to Iceland. They're bringing up fish and whales and whatever else, you know, anything that's profitable, and they're selling. Almost nothing needs to be imported. So think of it as always making money and never having to spend any. Eric's going to have a son, Leif Erikson. Yes, he names his son Leif. And Leif Erikson says, you know what? My dad was this, he's, he's this really big, famous guy. He discovered Greenland. I want to discover something, too. So he gets into a boat, and he starts sailing west. Some people say that he got all the way over to the continent, continental part of the North America here. And he says, hey, I found a new land. And what creative name does this new land get? New found land. Pronounced 
Newfoundland, Canada. Now, whether or not he really found it, uh, people argue about that. But it is possible that Leif Erikson and other Vikings made it all the way into Canada or the U.S. area. Keep in mind, this would be quite a while before Christopher Columbus. We're talking a few hundred years. Now, here's the thing about Greenland. Greenland is Greenland, not Europe. Very different seasons, very different land. I mean, the trees there grew very, very slowly. But they're cutting them down very, very fast. The summers are not nearly as long. So these big, fat cows won't have as much grass and hay and straw or whatever to eat. So they won't be big and fat for long. So you can't treat Greenland like Europe. But the Vikings tried to. And eventually, they run out of things, like trees. Their exports shrink down, and now they're having to buy tons of stuff and import things. And they're finding out the summer isn't as long as they need it to be for what they're used to growing. So they start struggling. Some people start starving. Others go back to Iceland. All sorts of problems happen. To make matters worse, a mini ice age happens. Things start getting really cold. Winters start lasting a lot longer. A lot more ice, a lot more snow. And with this snow and ice comes the return of the Tunuits. There were some Viking stories of these little guys that would just come out of a snowstorm and attack the Viking's town or take stuff from the Viking's town and then disappear back into the snow. Those were probably the Tunuits. When the Vikings would go look for them, they couldn't find them. Part of it is the Vikings were looking for people like them. Big people who built houses on top of the snow out of wood. People who lived near the ocean where it's a little greener. But that wasn't the Tunuits. So the Vikings that were still there, time to go. So here's some pictures of some Vikings. The one in the very bottom middle, you see the classic Viking with the horns. The Vikings did not have horns on their helmets, at least not the everyday battle helmets. Maybe for ceremonies or whatever, but not. I mean, you don't go into battle with a helmet that has lots of extra weight. It's going to cause it to fall or tip. So on either side of that, you'll see some traditional Vikings. Their shields, swords, axes, the real helmets, things like that. Up top, you'll see some Viking ships. Now, we're not going to talk about the Vikings much. There's a YouTube clip here I want you guys to watch. I'll post it up on Edmodo. Because I doubt you can click on it here. But here's some basic stuff. Vikings were a warrior culture. In fact, they even had a law that said you have to carry a weapon with you. They were also big explorers. This map down here shows you where the Vikings started in the dark, dark, dark purple. Then they spread to the red, then the orange, yellow, green. So you can see the Vikings spread out all over the place. Big explorers. The main reason they explored is because they like to steal stuff. So the Vikings made most of their money. They'd sail someplace, and steal whatever they could and then sail back to their homes. 
I believe most of the green areas on this map were places they would go to mostly just to steal. I think yellow as well. But they'd only do that in the early summer. The rest of the year they had to spend on farming, trading, regular daily life. So when you watch the video, one of the things I want you to look for, what are the three levels of society? Kind of how were women treated or tell me some stuff about women. Tell me something about their weapons. Tell me something about their religion. All right, Inuits. They appear around 1000 CE in Alaska and Canada. We already know they kicked out the Tunuits because the Inuits had bows and arrows, dog sleds, dogs, and other technology that made a huge advantage. The Inuits could hunt polar bears, caribou, anything on land. They could also fish, hunt seals, whales, walruses, whatever. So these people are really going to do well in Alaska and Canada. They're going to thrive. And in fact, they're still there today. Now someone might wonder, well, how did the Inuits and the American Indians get along? Did, did they trade? Did they like each other? Did they go to war? Let me answer that with this. So the, the Inuits moved around by using a dog sled, which is basically just a, a big sled that's pulled by dogs, hence the name. Those don't work very well unless there's snow on the ground. So how exactly are they going to get down south? These are pe people who thrive in the colder weathers and are used to that area. So they didn't really go south much. So I don't know what kind of interaction there was. There probably was some trading between the farther north people in what's now the U.S. and the farther southern Inuit people. But there you go. Up top, you'll see a dog sled. In the middle, you see a dog sled. There's a huge race held all the time called the Iditarod where people will race their dog sleds all around. People have been known to die during that, I believe. All right, so Inuits. They're often called Eskimos. They do not like to be called Eskimo. And you don't want to walk up to an African-American and call him the N-word. And you don't want to walk up to an Inuit and call him an Eskimo. Excellent sea travelers. They would use the stars as a map. So they could tell where they were, where they were going, how far away they were. But that only helps you at night. This middle picture of these rocks stacked up, those are land markers called Inukshuk. Think of them like street signs. Telling you where you are, Things like that. So they were markers built on land. Uh, tools and supplies. They used animal skins and animal bones for most of their tools and supplies. They did have some stone tools. Um, walrus tusks make pretty good knives. They made parkas. You can see down on the bottom. Parka is the jacket with the fur lining on the hood. Sorry. They also made heavy snow boots, and up top, you'll see one of the things they're most famous for, that ice house called an igloo. As far as their religion goes, they're what's called animists. That means they believed everything has a soul. The wind, you know, everything around you has a soul. Not just people, not just animals. In fact, they even believed the human body had more than one soul. And if you got sick, it might have been something wrong with one of those souls, or maybe one of those souls is missing. All 
All right, quick review. What are the three parts of north of the far north? Hopefully you thought Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. Who are the three groups that live there? Vikings, Inuits, Tunuits. How many states and territories are there in Canada? You can see them all on the map. You should be able to tell me something about the Inuits. Should be able to tell me something about the Tunuits. And you should be able to tell me about the Vikings. 